Good morning, Year 6, and welcome to today's English lesson, which is all about, um, re it's a reading session, and it's all about the story Malamander by Thomas Taylor, and we're going to be looking at the start of this book. Um, before I start the lesson, I just want to say this book is absolutely brilliant, and I thoroughly recommend it to any of you who are looking for a, um, a sort of adventure story book. I think you'll absolutely love it, and it's one of my big, strong recommendations, because it's brilliant. Um, we're just going to look at the opening to the book and what we're going to do is we're going to do some inference work around it. So the I can today is I can make inferences based upon what I have read. Um, so the first task I want you to do is I want you to have a look at the front cover and the picture next to it, which is like to do with the uh, a map of the setting of the place. Um, and just see if you can um, look at some of the, the pictures on there and see if it gives you any clues as to what the story is about. Uh, pause the video now and just spend 30 seconds just having a look and thinking, could you figure out maybe what is this story all about? Off you go. Okay, hopefully you've had a little go at that and had a look at the picture and seen if there's any clues to um, what's coming up. I think some things are fairly obvious. You can see what the setting will be about. Um, the picture on the front, does that give anything away? Um, I'm not going to say too much at this point, because if I do say too much, I think I'll give away the rest of the lesson, I'll give away the story. So it's just for you to make a little prediction um, early on, which is something you should do as a reader. When you go to the library and look at books, make sure that you go in, have a look at the, the book covers and the book blurbs and start making predictions as to what you think the story might be about. So, before we start reading our extracts, we're going to do our vocab lab. And on screen there are four phrases from the, um, the chapter coming up. And it, in it are some vocabulary that you may not be familiar with or you might not know quite what that's referring to. Uh, and they're highlighted on screen. Um, so what I'd like you to do first of all is pause the video and just see if you can um, figure out or understand <coughs> what are those different words and what are those meanings. Off you go. Okay, so... I'm just going to click to the next slide. Hopefully you've done that. So first of all, we start with eerie on sea, which is the place. And what does eerie mean? Well, eerie means a bit strange and a little bit frightening. Okay, so it's a, the place itself is called eerie on sea, and eerie means strange and a little bit frightening. And we've got the phrase like fast, ghostly tentacles. Well, just checking there, you knew the meaning of the word fast. Fast means large, okay, so like when we talk about like a vast landscape, it's a big, large, open landscape. Uh, so vast, ghostly tentacles, well, tentacles, and if you know what tentacles are, uh, in, a, in the dictionary I looked this up, it says a slender, flexible limb or appendage in an animal. And I've got a picture here to show you, if you think of an octo octopus with its tentacles, that's what tentacles are. So that phrase, like vast, ghostly tentacles. Um, I get this picture of these big, large, ghostly, obviously we know what they mean, ghostly means tentacles. I can start to create that image in my own head. Um, then we've got the locals keep off the beach when darkness falls. Hopefully you understand that the, the locals means people, the people in the local area. Um, so it's just that misunderstanding if you don't know that one. Uh, this one is, would be a little bit more challenging because, and the phrase is, have seen the unctuous malamander creep. So what might the word unctuous mean? Well, it's obviously um, some sort of adjective, uh, it, but I would imagine most of you have not come across that word. Uh, in fact, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I've never come across that word, and I looked it up in the dictionary, uh, because that's what you need to do um, if you don't know what a word means, and it means oily and slimy. So I've got this, uh, so some, this, this oily, slimy malamander, we don't know what malamander is, but it creeps. So straight away we've got some ideas about maybe what the malamander does or what that is, okay? So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flick to the next page and I'm going to read the extract to you. If you prefer, you could read the extract to yourself because it's on the Teams area. Um, but what I'm going to do is read it to you um, like so. This is Chapter 1 to Malamander. Erie on Sea. You've probably been to Erie on Sea without ever knowing it. When you came, it would have been summer. There would have been ice cream and deck chairs and a seagull that pinched your chips. You probably poked about in the rock pools with your mum while your dad found that funny shell, remember? And I bet when you got into the car to drive home, you looked up, the looked up at the words, cheery on sea, written in light bulbs over the pier, and got ready to forget all about your day at the seaside. It's that kind of place in the summer. But you should try being here when the first winter storms blow in, when the letters C and H blow off the pier as they always do in November, 
when sea mist drifts up the streets like vast ghostly tentacles and salt water, salt water spray rattles the windows of the Grand Nautilus Hotel. Few people visit Erie on sea then. Even the locals keep off the beach when darkness falls and the wind howls around more rocks and the wreck of the battleship Levadian, where even now some swear they have seen the unctuous Malamander creep. But you probably don't believe in the Malamander. You maybe think there's no way a fishman can be real. And that's fine. Stick to your ice cream and deck chairs. This story probably isn't for you anyway. In fact, do yourself a favour and stop reading now. Close this book and lock it in an old tin box. Wrap the box in a heavy chain and throw it off the pier. Forget you ever heard of Erie on Sea. Go back to your normal life. Grow up, get married, start a family. And when your children can walk, take them for a day at, a sea at the seaside too. In the summer, of course. Stroll on the beach and find a funny shell of your own. Reach down and pick it up. Only it's stuck to something. Stuck to an old tin box. The lock has been torn off and the chain is gone. Can the sea do that? You open the fox and find that it's empty. Nothing but barnacles and seaweed and something else. Something like slime. You hear a sound behind you, a sound like footsteps coming closer, like slimy, flippery footsteps coming closer. You turn around, what do you see, really? Well, maybe this story is for you, after all. Okay, so that's chapter one to this brilliant story called Malamander. Um, okay, what we're going to do, like we do in class, we're going to do our quick quiz. Uh, the six questions are on screen for you now. What I'd like you to do in your book uh, is write down your answers to the questions. Uh, you might have to pause the video and flick back to the text, which is in Teams, and have a read through again and see if you can answer questions one to six. They are retrieval questions, so skim, skim through and scan for the, the right answers. Um, I'll let you read the questions and you can find the answers yourselves. Okay, pause the video, have a go. Okay, hopefully you've had a go at the quick quiz um, and we've got a series of uh, questions there that were retrieval questions to do with the, the extract which we've just read. I'm going to flick to the next side and you can see if your answers match up with the answers that I have. So what is Erie on Sea usually called? Well, actually, it's usually called Cheery on Sea because the sea and, and that links to the second question. What happens when the first winter storm blows in or well, the letters C and H blow off the pier? So those are the first two questions. Uh, hopefully you got those ones right. What was the name of the hotel called? Well, it's called the Grand Nautilus Hotel. Um, capital letters for all the names because it's a proper noun. Uh, which ship is wrecked in Erie on Sea? And it's called the Leviathan. I'm not very good at saying that one. The Leviathan, I think it's called. I'm not sure. I'm not very good at my promotion, pronunciation on that one. Uh, but I hope you got the answer right. And then we've got which creature apparently lives in Erie on Sea? And it's called the Malamander. Okay. And then finally, what was in the old tin box? Well, it says nothing. And if you just put nothing, you would have missed the second bit, which says nothing but. Actually, what's in there is barnacles, seaweed, and slime. So well done if you've got all those questions right. Uh, it means you've done well on your quick quiz and you can give those a tick. Okay, what we're going to go into next is some individual questions. Now in our in that normal classroom environment what we do is a bit of partner talk here but what I'd like you to do in this lesson is read the question, have a look back at the text and have a thing and make a note down in your book what, what you think the answer is and then I'll, I'll, I'll talk through um, what, what I think the answer might be myself. So the first question, you pause the video now, um, what is, or what do you think is, the Malamander? Just pause the video now and have a go. Okay, well done. So um, I'm just going to um, open up this extract here. This is, a, this is a part of the extract, if you've read through the text, where you'd have found where it tells you what the Malamander is. So it says the locals keep off the beach when darkness falls and the wind howls around more rocks and the wreck of the battleship, that's that word again, Le Leviathan, 
where even now some swear they've seen the unctuous Malamander creep. But you probably don't believe in the Malamander. You maybe think there's no way a fish man can be real. Okay, so the, the answer is it's, it must be some sort of a fish man type creature. It's, that's what it's giving away. It's this strange creature that it refers to as a fish man. Um, and I'm making a connection there. That's one of the things we talk about in our reading a lot is how to make connections. Suddenly this idea of it being, well, it says that you maybe think there's no way a fish man could be. So it, so it suggests to me it's a myth. It's some sort of sea creatures. It's a fish, half fish, half man. So I start thinking of mystical sea creatures. And I've got things like the Loch Ness Monster in my head. Um, then it goes picture the Loch Ness Monster. Kraken, there's another sort of mystical sea creature. Um, and then finally, I sort of looked up a picture of a, a fish man type character. So I've got this sort of image in my head as well. So straight away, this idea of like myths and legends. We don't know if it's real, but there's some sort of strange character. Um, same sort of fish, half fish, half man type character. Okay, so my next question for you to consider is what impression or impressions does this passage give you of the Malamander? So when it says, few people visit Erie on sea then, even the locals keep off the beach and when darkness falls and the wind howls around war rocks and the wreck of the, the, wreck of the battleship, where even now some swear they have seen the unctuous Malamander creep. But you probably don't believe in the Malamander. You maybe think there's no way a fishman can be real. And that's fine. So what sort of impression or impressions does it give you of this strange creature? Um, I'll give you a pause the video now and have a little thing to yourself and write maybe write some notes about what impression you have of the Malander based on that Malamander based on that passage. Okay, hopefully you've had a go at doing that one. So um Personally, the impression I get that the, the language the author uses there, um, keeping it's, it's when even the locals keep off the beach when darkness falls. So even the people that live in the village, they won't go near the beach when it when it goes dark. So straight away, I'm thinking, well, this 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 creature sounds quite dangerous. It talks about the wind howling, so the setting, the perception of the setting I'm getting is quite a moody setting. And um, there's a battleship there. There's a wreck. Um, and, it's, and it's also this, again, this idea of it being a bit of a myth that says even now some swear they have seen this creature, but no one's sure of it. Um, and it says, but you probably don't believe in the Malamander. You maybe think there's no way a fisherman could be real. So the impressions I'm getting is this is, this is a creature that the locals, they don't know if it's real. They think it might be. There's people say they've seen it. It's a bit of a myth, a bit of a legend. Uh, and it sounds like... Um, it's kind of it sets the tone of quite a, a scary moody setting and, and then i start thinking this creature might be quite a quite a, an, a, like an eerie creature sort of uh, make you feel a bit uncomfortable um a bit scary so let's go to the next bit here um i'm just going to read the next bit to you and then i'll ask you the question for you to think about again so it says this story probably isn't for you anyway in fact do yourself a favor and stop reading now Close this book and lock it in an old tin box. Wrap the box in a heavy chain and throw it off the pier. Forget you ever heard of the Erie on Sea. Go back to your normal life. Grow up, get married, start a family. And when your children can walk, take them for a day at the seaside too. In the summer, of course. Stroll on the beach and find a funny shell of your own. What do you think the author's intention is during this passage? Is the author trying to make you stop reading? Have a pause uh, and maybe make a little note to yourself. Uh, or say the answer to yourself as if you're in class when you're talking. What do you think the author's intention is? Pause the video now uh, and we'll t discuss that through. Okay, um, so what is the author's intention? I've got your highlights in yellow. This pro story probably isn't for you anyway. In fact, do yourself a favour and stop reading now. So if we were to take that literally, we think the author is telling us to actually close the book which would be a strange request, really, wouldn't it? Because obviously this author's written this really long story and then they're telling you to not read it. So what do you think the intention is? Well, I, I think this is designed to create an element of intrigue and suspense because it's sort of saying to you that, oh, well, actually, it's quite an eerie story about quite an eerie uh, creature. Uh, and maybe it might be a little bit too scary for you. So I don't dare you to read on. In fact, actually, maybe you shouldn't bother. And it's kind of, um, it tempts you to want to read a little bit more through that sort of almost daring you to carry on. Actually, if you dare, you can try and read it. And that, that, that sort of 
makes me want to read it even more. The minute he tells me I shouldn't read it, I think, actually, I really, really, really want to read it. So I think it's a really clever authorial technique. And that's something we could sort of a magpie maybe from some of our writing at times. So straight away, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm really fascinated by this opening to this story. Um, final question for you to think about before we start our main task. Uh, I'm just going to read this passage to you at the end. It says, the lock has been torn off and the chain is gone. So it's talking about the old tin box. Can the sea do that? You open the box and find that it's empty. Nothing but barnacles and seaweed and something else. Something like slime. You hear a sound behind you, a sound like footsteps coming closer. Like slimy, flippery footsteps coming closer. You turn around. What do you see? Really? Well, maybe this story is for you after all. So what do you think is behind the reader at this point? I'll, I'll, I'll let you pause the video and just write down your answer. OK, hope you've had a go at that. Um, I think I know what it is. I think using the clues from the text, which obviously is my inferential skills. And I'm not, I don't know for certain I'm making a prediction here based on the clues. And that's what we do in inference. That's the idea of this. Uh, it's like being a detective and trying to figure out the from the clues we've got. Um, I think it refers to the Malabanza as being unctuous and slimy and oily early on. And then suddenly we've got this reference to some slime in the old tin box. And the lock's been torn off and the chain is gone. And it's all building up. It's building that suspense. What do you see? I think it's designed to make you think that it must be the Malamanda. Now, we can't know for certain. And that's an authorial technique that they've used there, isn't it? They're, they're, they're making you want to read the next chapter because they've intrigued you. They've, they've made you make this inference that we think it's the Malamanda, which I think it probably is. Uh, but we don't know for certain. OK, so th th this really built up that suspense and intrigue. And, I, and I'd be desperate to read the next chapter. All right, that's why I recommend you read this, this book if you get the chance after we've done this lesson. Um, so now we've looked at this opening extract and we've answered some questions all about it. And um, we're going to go into your independent task in a minute that you, you'll have a go at doing yourself. And it's going to relate to what you think the Malamanda looks like. So my first thing I'd like you to do is to read through the text and find all the phrases or sentences that give us clues as to how the Malamanda may look. Also, what about the setting? Are there any phrases or words to do with the setting that will help you with what the Malamanda might look like? So my first challenge is have a look back at the extract, pause this video, scan through if you've got a print out of it that's it it's even better because you actually under, underline it if you can but it doesn't matter you don't need that just have a look at the extract and find all the phrases or sentences that give clues as to one how the malamanda may look and two the malamanda's personality okay pause the video now and have a go at that Okay, I did this before myself and actually cut out some of the key phrases I think will really help you with that. So there's the bit where it says, you maybe think there's no way a fish man can be real. That's the biggest clue for me. Okay, so I've got this half fish, half man creature. So straight away, I've got something like that. That helps me with what it might look like. Then there was another bit where it talks about this slime. Um, so I think of this slime character. I think it's got some sort of straight like, slime all over it. It might be covered in slime. I'm not sure. It says it's an unctuous character, and we've in our vocab lab we talked about being oily and slimy. So now I've got a different, slightly like different picture of like oily uh, skin, slimy skin, half fish, half man, um, and and uh, this verb choice here, the way it creeps. So that's helping me picture this this creature because creatures that creep uh, tend to be quite sinister creatures. So I, I'm sort of picturing him sort of. Uh, sort of lent over a little bit, okay? A bit like that picture I saw earlier on. Um, and it says here, you hear a sound behind you, a sound like footsteps coming closer, like slimy, frippery footsteps coming closer. It's clear that um, th this character is quite, um, I, get, I get this very eerie, sinister feel to it. Um, so I've now got a, a good picture in my head of what it may look like. Now, the other thing I asked you to do was think about the setting and what the setting may look may help you um, with the atmosphere for this story um, and, and to help you with what, what you think the character might look like. And I've said, what about the title? The title's Eerie on Sea, so quite a bit frightening, a little bit scary. Um, 
and then there's this little passage here that gives you this this the idea of what the um of the the set the atmosphere and the mood um for this chapter and it talks about things like a winter storm uh, the C and H off the, have blown off the pier. Sea mist drifts up the streets. Salt water spray rattles against the hotel. Few people will visit it. The locals keep off the beach. There's a shipwreck, and that's where the character creeps. So clearly, um, it's not a particularly pleasant setting. In fact, there's this strange, mysterious creature in the in the sea somewhere. So now in my head, I've got quite a clear image of what I think the character, of what I think the Malamanda looks like. So your task for today, your independent task is this. I want you to, on a, on a piece of paper in your book, I want you to draw a picture of what you think the Malamanda would look like using evidence from the text, because this relates to the skill of inference. You've took lots of clues from the text. You've inferred what they mean. You've, you've been a detective. And now you've got a picture in your head of what you think this character may look like. So on your page in the centre, this is the key success, I want you to draw your version of the Malamanda in the centre of the page based on evidence from the text. I want you to draw it using clues and information that you are given from the text. I want you to use the mood and setting of the text to assist you with how the Malamanda might appear, because we discussed how it's quite a moody piece. Um, and can you convey the Malamanda's personality through imagery? For example, maybe the facial expression of the Malamanda gives away um, what sort of character it is. Around your drawing, this is really important, you need to label the different features of the Malamanda with direct quotations from the text. So I'm not going to model this directly for you because if I start drawing what I picture, that will kind of ruin the prediction for yourself. I want you to do it without ever seeing a picture of the Malamanda. I want you to just have a go and see what you come up with. There's no right or wrong answer here, and it's not about being a brilliant artist. It's just drawing what you see based on the text. And then whatever you do, if you draw um, it's the face or the skin, what is it that made you think it looks like that? And then you've got to take a quote from the text and write that in the site, on, label it and write it next to it. OK, that's the key success. And that's what I want you to do on your page. And I cannot wait to see what you come up with as a stretch. Uh, activity. What I like to think about is once you've done that, you can actually, even if you wanted to, you could draw the setting around the Malamanda. By the setting, I mean the beach setting with maybe the wreck and maybe the sky and what the atmosphere is like. Uh, and could you even label parts of the setting um, with quotes from the text as well? And maybe can you convey the mood and atmosphere of the setting? So you actually have a drawing that's labelled with all those references from the text. Um, I'm going to leave the video there now. Uh, for this activity, I'd really like it if you could send the work in that you do, maybe take a picture of it, and um, if you could send it to us, uh, ideally to the Share Your Work folder. Um, we really want to, as teachers, have a look at what you come up with for this. I'm going to ask you to pause the video now. In a second, I'm going to I'm going to click to another page, which has got some versions of Malamanders that children drew in the past where they did the same activity. Um, but I would suggest don't look at this yet, because it might... Um, change what you think the Malamanda looks like but if you went when, maybe when you finished drawing yours it'd be good to go back to this video and look at this next slide uh, and see if yours looks anything like any of these pictures so I'm gonna ask you to start the activity now um, and I can't wait to see what you come up with draw your version of the Malamanda in the middle and make sure you label it neatly with straight lines with lots of quotes from the text as to why you think the creature looks like this uh, based on what you've read all right, I can't wait to see what you come up with. Uh, I think it's a really fascinating chapter, uh, and I know you guys will do a really, really good job on this. Okay, get going now, guys, and in a few seconds, uh, I'm going to show the, the pictures that other children came up with, so make sure you pause the video first. Okay, if you're still listening to the video now, it means you've already done your work, and now I'm just going to show you a few examples of uh, drawings people drew in the past to give you an idea of what they came up with. Um, and we've got some really interesting designs here. Uh, there's this one here that I absolutely love. Um, but then it looks very different to this one and to this one. But all of them have got that idea of like a, a half fish, half man type creature. And, and I can see that the different, um, in each way, I can see how each one would relate to sort of the, the images you get through the story. All right, guys, I hope you've really enjoyed that activity. Uh, and I can't, see, can't wait to see you on one of the live chats. All right, see you later. Bye.